It is. It's a little weird. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. It took us a few minutes to get going here, and we're having a little lighting issue. Hold on. Let's move over a little. Hello. All right. And I assume people will hop on as we go. So, I'm Beth. This is Tiffany. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is our business book club. We're going to talk about the four hour work week. Um, so, Tim Ferriss is an interesting guy. Uh, <laughs> he definitely has um, a way of doing things. Yeah, he has a way. And, you know, what's funny is, and I, you know, I said in another video, like, this is not a new book. It's not, uh, what is that, like 10 years old or so? Yeah. <laughs> so some of, some of what he talks about is maybe, you know, a little outdated, but I think he had some good points. So let me see. I, <laughs> I read <laughs> very nicely. I tabbed. <laughs> I tabbed everything, um, and I think the 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 one thing, if you if you could read like the one chapter <laughs> of the book, would be my story and why you need this book um, is his D E A L to become what he calls the new rich, right? So it stands for definition, elimination, automation, and liberation, and uh, the whole book is kind of expounding on on that concept and it's a little different if you're an employee trying to make yourself a, a better job than if you're running your own business but um, I think he's got a, a pretty good system for how to evaluate what you're doing and if it's a good good idea yeah, you being know productive. <laughs> being productive like um, you know, how often do you find yourself just like going through your email and responding to things because that's just what you do? And should you do it? I don't know. I feel like half the time I get an email and I just am like, okay, or received, or I'm like, this is dumb. And I'll get to it later. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll get to it later. And later <laughs> never comes. So that's its own issue. Um, let me see. D is for definition. So, um,. I thought his his views on retirement were super interesting because if you think about it, he's kind of right. Like if you're gonna work your whole life and then you're gonna retire, at like I don't know what age do people retire anymore? Like eighty? Yeah. No, I like the idea 70. of having and then you're throughout your life. <laughs> yeah. Right. So basically, if you didn't read it, it's um, you, instead of working to retire, you kind of work to take mini retirement so like maybe you go away for a month maybe you go away for three months a year whatever it is while you're still young and hopefully healthy and you can do it and he kind of justifies it by going through some math which I don't know that I always agree with his math but you know he says like if you go to like Costa Rica for example Costa Rica is supposed to be way well, cheaper we than also here. have to remember this is like from 10 years ago so I think it's that, still cheaper though well a lot of places are still cheaper a lot of places are still cheaper <laughs> especially when they're their money is worth more than ours <laughs> or less whatever right so if you <laughs> if you live somewhere that's really expensive you know if you're paying like three grand a month for rent and if you can get out of that I think that was the thing that always bugged me is that he'd be like oh well if you add up your rent and your car and your this and your that but you have to be able to be flexible you have like to, you have to have the flexibility you don't have a mortgage <laughs> if you don't have a mortgage <laughs> but you know what at this point you could Airbnb your house you know, if you're, that if bring, you wanted to So leave. that brings up where I question a lot of it is, um, he's single and <laughs> most of us have children or a spouse or both. Um, so, you know, that's the added into that. Um, yeah. I know I, he does talk about, he talks about, yeah, like a family going on a yacht for a couple months. That's I feel amazing. Like I maybe wouldn't come back with all of my kids though. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think, well, the story is that they got along very well, but I'm not sure that would happen with my I family. Think I think everybody some, would like. I think he makes some of this up. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my family would be okay with it for like three days. <laughs> Just being together in a, in a close quarter for like two days. <laughs> I think actually I would be okay with it after three days. Forget the kids. They'd probably be like, this is great. I'd be like, ah, oh, get me out of here. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, I think, some challenges to what he suggests. I also am going to say that I don't love some of what he tells you to do that he kind of pushes the boundary of what is I, 
don't think anything, anything he says is like, do this, it's illegal. I think it's kind of dishonest, maybe a little unethical, some of his discussions. Like when he's like, oh, here, here's how to propose, you know, getting a more flexible schedule if you're an employee. Well, take two days off, call in sick, work really hard. When you come back, don't work so hard. And then be like, hey boss, I work so much better from home. Can't you see the difference in my productivity? I was like, um, so yeah, yeah, some of his things about corporate uh, are interesting because I, I worked in corporate for a while and yes, meetings were a big waste of time, yeah, but nothing <laughs> nothing happened if you weren't at the meeting. So, um, right. I, I don't know. I think everybody has to take it in their own way and figure out how they can use it. Um, the one, I don't know what chapter it was, but the one thing that he did talk about on being productive and the one example of the guy where basically he just asked himself all day long, is this being productive? Is this is what I'm doing right now being productive? And I was like, huh, that's interesting. So I did it for one day and, and yeah, it was very productive. Um, <laughs> so, I think it's hard to keep that up though. Like you well, can do it for a short burst, but if you don't systematically change Well, and he said he put reminders in his phone and so I didn't do that. I just, I just, the next day after I, I, cause I listened to the audible and I was like, oh, hmm, okay. Am I being productive? So I was just in my head, probably making a reminder would be, you know, a good thing to do. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but I, I feel I have been more productive overall since, since that part of the book. I think he had a lot of insight <laughs> about distraction. We were talking about this well, before yes, the video, yes. you know, like how often are you in email? Like I know. Yeah. Oh, I'm at a red light. Let me scroll through my... Like, that's not productive. What am I going to do? I'm going to see a message, read it for two seconds, and then be like, oh my God, I have to deal with it. Well, you should not be checking your emails while you're driving. At a red light. light. I said at a red light. (laughs) Not 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 at a red light either. (laughs) Not driving. Not doing one of those, you know, Florida... Oh, yeah. Or one of these. It's even better. No one can tell I'm reading my phone down here. Um... No, no phone use while you're driving. No please. phone. We are not advocating <laughs> driving. No, I, I do have already strict policies on my email, but I do check it often. Oh, so. hey, we have another book club person. <laughs> hey, Alex, if you if you want to get on the video, you have to still be like behind us because <laughs> we don't have. Okay, you can wave. Hi. <laughs> I so would say we're talking about distractions, about how Tim Ferriss talks about like email, reading the news social media as a distraction and you know he talks about like you need to um kind of look at what you're doing and consciously say am I just using this as a distraction instead of a method of actually getting something done I was never as extreme as him where it was a month weekly monthly but the most useful one of the most useful things I took out of the first time I read through this book was I switched to check email at the office three times a day and one of the things I recently started doing, I don't check email in the morning. I don't check my work I, email I am until working, after lunch. That is aspirational for me. I'm trying really <laughs> hard because it's like wake up, phone, email. Like, no, it, but it's not helpful. It doesn't help anything. If if so, nothing good happens. If something is an emergency, someone will oh, text me. you will me. find me. <laughs> if uh, you have a real emergency, and I had uh, someone I worked for once that there are no accounting emergencies. Which is not 100 percent true, but it's like 98 percent true. If you work for the federal government, you're shutting the bank down on Friday. Right. Accounting emergency. Right. And right. You do tax returns. <laughs> not no, an accounting. No. And I've case. had people say it to me. They're like, "Well, you know, what if I can't get a hold of you and I have an emergency?" And I'm like, "Well, what is this emergency that you think you're going to have?" They're like, "Well, what if I get a letter from the IRS?" And I'm like, "Well, first off, you got at least like 30 days to respond. So you you have a month. You'll you will find me even if I take a month off." You will come and find me. But I, I will add to that: anybody else's emergency is not exactly your emergency. <laughs> but this also, your bad planning. <laughs> yes, someone else's lack yes, of planning yes. can definitely be an emergency for yes. you. But it's still not really your emergency. It just depends. <laughs> it's not your fault. It is your problem. Maybe. Yes, right. depending. That could be. That could be true. <laughs> but I liked his. You know, like I can't couldn't tell you the last time I went, went to a news web website. Like, first off, I feel like they're all spammed out. I don't, and I'm not talking about their content. I'm not saying they do have someone is fake news or whatever. Yeah. It's literally loading the page, mm-hmm. and you see, like, the person with, like, 
sticking something Some in their nasty eye. Picture. And, yeah. like, it, there's some weird picture. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, what the hell? I thought I was like reading the news, like international politics, and instead it's you know but you can read how to Twitter reduce cellulite and read the social media beats coverage, where they will take tweets and Instagram <laughs> photos related to a news article, and I will get the opinions. So instead of an analysis of opinion that used to like quote. PhDs and government officials, they now quote some guy who's got Twitter handle. Florida man says, <laughs> your Florida man opinion on Florida man psychedelic drugs and, and monetary fiscal policies. <laughs> oh, hey, Marcy. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, okay, so yeah, I think his distraction thing is real. We, we are just distracted all the time. And once I read that and I started paying attention, I realized that I was like, Oh, Facebook, Facebook, scrolling, not even liking your comment, just scroll, scroll, scroll. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I also started to realize how many freaking advertisements I see. Um, I turned off notifications on my phone for both Facebook and Instagram. Oh, I have like no yeah. notifications I have no anymore notifications. For, like, for I so can go into Instagram and enjoy the attention for five minutes. But as a known, I'm wasting time, not pretending I'm doing something. Yeah, it's, it's true. Um, so I just want to say that I actually accidentally took a mini retirement last summer. Um, it wasn't for our work week planned, but I was so burnt out after tax season that I was like, I can't, I can't work oh, so anymore. So you just took the accountant month off, is it? Well, okay, so first I took a week and I went to Boy Scout camp with my son and his troop and I got Scoutmaster well, that trained. that wasn't really vacation though. But it was because, because... There was one room that had Wi-Fi, and I had like no cell signal, and it was like in the woods up by Orlando. So I kind of was like, I, I warned everyone who I had projects in process. I'm like, I am leaving. You will not be able to reach me. Nothing. And, and you know what happened? No one bothered you. They couldn't. Yeah. Well, first off, they couldn't. And guess what else? There was no emergencies the week I was gone. <laughs> and then I had planned. We planned a road trip, and we went up to New Jersey. And I told people, I'm like, I am traveling. Like, I'm still available, but it's going to be intermittent. I don't know what kind of Wi-Fi or cell phone. And I wanted to enjoy it. Like, it was a family road trip. And then it was in New Jersey for a while. But the beauty of, you know, even 10 years later, past when this was written, is it's so much easier to do these things on the road than it was oh, yeah. even 10 years ago. I mean, my practice is totally cloud-based. The thing to remember that's a big difference between this and 10 years ago is the device, the elite device then was the BlackBerry. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the, 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 the yeah. iPhone is 10 and a half years old. That's true. It's, yes, it's a different the, world. Yes, the iPhone didn't have apps when this book was written. So we all had keyboards and email, but email was still text-based and it yeah. wasn't... You know, you, you, you didn't have, ever, and your BlackBerry used to throw all your notifications into one pile. So your okay. Facebook, except LinkedIn, for whatever reason, LinkedIn didn't work on BlackBerry. Right, it never worked right on BlackBerry for whatever but, reason. Oh, but cool. regardless of that, like the tech changing, you can both do everything on your phone now. There's no longer a need to necessarily have your laptop. I, don't, I haven't had a laptop in like four years. We're on Facebook Live if you want to scoot this way. You're going to have to have a really (laughs) tiny head and a wave to the no viewers we have right now. I don't know if Marcy's still on there or not. So Leslie just joined us. Hi, Leslie. So we were talking about um, technology, distractions, um, having very mobile businesses where you can go. I accidentally took a mini retirement. Not accidentally. I mean, I planned it, but it was, it's what Tim Ferriss would call a mini retirement, where I went to New Jersey last summer for, we did a road trip. We were in Jersey, went to South Carolina. Um, it was just like a number of weeks that I was out. And you know what, how many emergencies awesome. I had that came up? Zero. <laughs> it was also, it wasn't like I left in March. If I took March off, I think that might be you know, that's like aspirational. It's like go away tax season <laughs> and have my whole firm still operate and, and still work. Um, we're not quite there yet, but that's definitely a goal of mine. I would love to, I would love if I never looked at a tax return again and the business <laughs> just happened around me. Oh, man. You can make that happen. I could make that happen. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, it's, do we look better now? We're having good hair days because it's cold yeah. in Florida. Um, okay, so <laughs> no frizz. No frizz. So, another thing that um, <laughs> I really like, you can try to squeeze in. It's, it's it overall matter. time. I'm fine. Oh, okay. uh, there I'm you just, are. I'm just going to be over here. <laughs> um, another thing that I loved, and I think it really had nothing to do, well, not nothing, it doesn't have a lot to do with retirement, 
And it's a little timely because of Marie Condon right now being all over Netflix with her, you know who she, that is? Marie like, Kondo. She's like, yeah. Kondo, whatever her name is. She's like the, little the Japanese lady. lady. She like, oh yeah, the she's like, wake yeah. up your yeah. books. You have to love wake it. Up your, it doesn't yeah, mean your co-host. Let it go. Whole thing. Right. I like yeah. that part of it though. I know, but there's some people that might not make the cut as a result. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he talks about. Why not? To be honest. <laughs> But he talks about in here, if you're going to, like, go away for, like, a year, what do you do with your stuff, right? So he, he talks about he tried to push all his stuff into, a, like, a storage unit. And I'm like, oh, my God, I have so much stuff. I have a house full of stuff. But why do I need to go away to get rid of it? I don't. Like, you could do this now. Like, you, you don't have to go away for months or a month or even a week. You can just be like, listen, I got too much shit in my house, and I need to get rid of it. On Facebook, uh, <laughs> am I gonna get censored? No, they have censors? no, no, that Facebook wasn't censors? that bad. No, <laughs> wasn't that bad. We can get worse, don't you, don't you worry. Um, so I really love this the is fact a family show. it's a family show. I don't think it is. Uh, I don't think there's any kids watching. Um, so <laughs> what is 20% of my belongings that I use 80% of the time? Oh my god, if I only kept the stuff that I used 80% of the time, I would get one of those little mini houses. Parking on the lawn and live in that instead of my actual house. Yeah, your house is just what you have for all your stuff. But I have all this stuff, right? Well, so I like that. And what belongings create stress in my life? Lot. Probably a lot. Probably my cell phone. It's the biggest well, source yeah, of stress in my life. Maybe just get Are rid you going to get rid of that? <laughs> I've thought about it sometimes. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to say, oh no, phone. I lost my cell phone. Uh, <laughs> I won't yeah. get another one. <laughs> and another thing that I thought was interesting when he talks about the. Um, you know what do you do now that you're one of the new rich and it's when you lose sight of why you did it and sometimes I'm like well if I bring more people on and they do more of the work what am I going to do all day and I'm like well, it would be nice to do nothing all day <laughs> that would last a somehow I while. always have stuff to do but it's like oh or micromanaging and emailing to fill time it's like I think we just create bullshit to do again uh, I, feel like I think one of the biggest insights is the idea that the 40 hour work week it's an industrial concept. It and really it has is. to do with factory shifts. Right, and keeping your factory at fully engaged with no downtime. Right. Eight, eight hours is not magical. Eight hours is how you divide into three shifts. True. That's why you have an eight hour work day, is you could run three shifts at a factory. That is totally true. And, you know, so we start to think how do we fill it? And I thought, you know, so many people like would go on Amazon and complain about this and be like, he doesn't work for us. Like, that's not the point. The point is, how do you do in four hours what you did in 40? Sure, he may, he works 60 hour weeks. So he's a crazy entrepreneur, but he's doing 15 businesses, not right. work one. Right. Well, the other thing I love that he talks about is your muse business, right? So that's basically you have a business that throws off cash that you don't have to do a whole lot to keep it going. This is where the four hours comes in. You know, what is the minimum you can do to keep this going and generating cash? If you built a little empire of news businesses that only took you a couple hours a week to run and they all kicked off money, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, that you don't you don't need to have an eight hour day where you're doing stuff. You know, you could take your current like any of us could take our current business, get it to the point where you're four houring it and then go do something else. You know, it doesn't have to be travel the world. Like, I don't personally have a burning desire to travel the world for a year, um, but, you know, maybe I wanted to do something else, and whatever that something else is, oh, I don't know, maybe I want to go write a book now. Well, my news business is paying for my life. Yeah. It's keeping everything else going. Well, now I have all this free time. I could go write a book or I don't know, whatever it is. So, yeah. I like that idea so you can have time to free up what you're inspired to do as opposed to what you need to do to survive. Need, need to do. And pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like about his whole concept. Yeah. And, and, and outsourcing, getting other people to do the stuff that you hate. Yes. Oh, isn't that the best? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he talks about like using um, international outsourcers. I've done that in the past. I do it still now. I had, um, I had, I think it came from maybe his blog or something get friday i used to use them long ago was that from here it's in, it's in here and um it was a great service when i used it my problem was because i had like a really low end small package with them because i didn't need that many hours this was a number of you know, maybe five years ago i had a fantastic guy who was my assistant and then he got promoted 
mm. and he because he was so good I was like oh my god this guy's amazing like he does he would write web pages for me like write copy and do stuff on LinkedIn for me I'm like this is great and then he got promoted and the new person was like oh, like you're not that that right, old then guy you need a LinkedIn person an email person a content person yeah, as opposed to all yeah. in one right this guy was like a jack of all trades and, and he was pretty good um, I've, I've always been a little apprehensive of the non-American non native English speakers doing the customer service aspect and I think it's because of the nature of my CPA business like people ask specifically like do I work with you or are you pawning me off on your staff so people are not expecting to get a email in broken English requesting tax documents from my office right. so some of those things are a little uh, hard to manage but I use a service called Fancy Hands uh, I am planning Alex's 40th birthday party. I'm like, I don't have time nor the desire to call and get vendors. I'm like, here, request, find me this, find me that. And these people, it's their job. They, they go and they search and they make the phone calls. I'm like, okay, ask them this, ask them that. It's still like a little bit of hand holding, but I don't have to get on the phone. I don't have to like find the, that time to sit there and do it. So there are ways around that. And um, we were talking before about hating to answer, talk on the phone. I don't know how you guys feel about the phone. I hate, <laughs> hate. If you call me and I don't have you in my phone, I'm 99 times out of 100 not going to answer because it's always, wait, don't hang up. We have important health insurance <laughs> information for your retirement plan. And I'm like, oh, it's a great way whatever. to start your automated. <laughs> wait, call. don't hang up. Wait, it's like click. Yeah, <laughs> that means the first thing yeah, you're going to do is hang up. up. <laughs> <laughs> the contrarians in us all. But I'll have people leave me voicemail, especially if they're like totally inbound, like I don't know who they are, no clue. And then leave me a message, and I will take that message when my voicemail system sent it to my email with the recording, forward it to Fancy Hands, and I say, hey, you know, use this link to my scheduler, call this guy back, get him on my calendar with a scheduled call where I know he, what he wants to talk about, and it's not catching me in the middle of 10 things, and oh, I want to ask you an inane question about something that you don't know anything about. Okay, great. You know, because... It's hard to answer out of nowhere questions as a CPA because you, you never know all the information. And it's really disruptive, like super disruptive. This is never a fast call. Even when clients book a 10 minute call with me, I'm like, listen, I gotta go. <laughs> this is 15 minutes already. Uh, you know, it's so that's hard. But, you know, having them be able to call and it's an American and they hopefully speak good English, um, it's, uh, it's been, I think it's been super helpful. Because it keeps me from having to do it too. Because I never want to call them back. And this way, it happens when I'm doing other stuff. Just take a second. Can I just ask you now? Right. And you're like, well, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. And it's like, no. We have to go through the effort of setting up another call. So I feel like that's almost like having planning meetings for meetings. You know, it's like the meetings for meetings' sake. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. I have a question for you on that same topic. Uh -huh. How do you feel about? I've read all about that you only answer email at a certain time and everybody knows it you only are available on the phone at certain times because i know it's I, I read that it takes 15 minutes once you're in a task oh yeah the and then you, like you get that phone call gears. and then to have to change gears to the phone call and then change back yeah. to your task it's 15 minutes on each side to actually get back into full mm. operational mode but i would say as i'm getting older i'm finding that 15 minutes becomes like two three hours <laughs> It's harder and harder to do that, but I think that's very true. I actually, like the one thing I implemented from this book was I put up an auto responder that I'm only checking my email at noon and at, I think I said 4.30, cause really at four o'clock I'm driving carpool. But just so people get that auto responder, cause the thing I hate is someone sends you an email and you don't respond to it that day, right away, whatever. And then the next day you get another, did you get my message? oh my god like it's not it's not an instantaneous response you sent me an email about something dumb and i haven't had a chance to respond to your dumb email <laughs> and now you're harassing me about not responding to your dumb email but for me i start to get like like anxious about it and then i'm like okay now i have to stop everything i'm doing yeah and respond to you because you're being a squeaky wheel and i'm like that's bad behavior and i don't want to encourage it so i actually put up i'm starting that this process to batch the email it's the other thing i do when i'm not when I'm when I'm not driving. Not at a red <laughs> light. Not, not at a red light. light. <laughs> not in my car. Not in the carpool line. And going through my emails, I see something, and I'm like, oh, I have to respond to this. 
I can't do it right now. Well, now I'm gonna go back and check my email later. Oh yeah, I remember I saw this after a spawn. Oh, I don't have time right now. And I do that over and over and it rattles around in my brain. I route all of my calls now. And if I miss a call, I have my office voicemail. It now emails me. And I hate listening to voicemail. So oh, I don't, so it doesn't email. The worst email. thing. Hold on, mine doesn't email. Can you email. call me back? No. <laughs> I, mine I doesn't email me. Mine emails my assistant. Oh, that's even better. Who is responsible for getting it, transcribing it, get it, figuring out what task needs to get done. Everything routes. You have requests of myself or my team. People are like, oh, we're sending it to you to prioritize. I said, no. You have to send it over. We have a, a ticket system now. All requests go in. Certain people, we create the ticket for them when the email comes in. But everything gets a ticket set up and a contact email, so they get that response. And that way, you have some organization and tracking of it. Yeah. So you need to know that you have to deal with it when you're ready to deal with it. They need to know you've got it because they don't realize they're agitating you. Right. They just are really concerned that they got spam blocked when I sent you three attachments and say, hey, take a look at this. <laughs> with no not, subject line. <laughs> right. Let's not pretend that there weren't 8,000 rounds of spam emails that looked like that or that you've missed a business email in... Totally. It, ha it happens. It definitely happens. I find the battle of the inbox is one of the, the hardest things. Um, I keep setting up filters, like stuff that I don't want to get off the mailing list for, but I can't have it in my inbox and like getting it out of there. I'm like archive, archive in Gmail. Um, and I even have a, a, my practice management system lets me triage, but I have to get the non-client stuff out before I can really deal with anything else because you know once I have to read like oh this is from like the American Association of CPAs so I need to read it oh they're trying to sell me crap like it's just too much thinking with every single email and then you miss those like important things <laughs> I opened a new email that I'm only giving to oh, yeah. individuals but then there's certain things that I do want reminders of and to, to get people to understand put this email on your email list use this to contact me direct it yeah. doesn't happen. You know what? Maybe I can set up a new one for the email list because I'm not going to get people to contact me at a new email now. That's not going to happen. But I like that idea. I can yeah. be like, lists at bethockberger.com. Your, your yeah. email shouldn't go to you. Your email needs to go into a triage system that's managed by someone other than you. We're working so on it. So it gets that. to you. But <laughs> if it gets, most of it is crap. Yeah. A lot of it can all be handled by junior people. Yeah. And the more time you spend triaging, it's time you're not doing what is actually valuable to your business. Right. Well, that's another thing I think that's really useful. When you look at his deal method, you know, how, can you figure out what you can eliminate? That was the greatest one. Like, what can you just stop doing altogether? But what can you have other people work on for you? Like, I've realized, um, like, I will go through my, my tax process and it's like, which pieces of it could I just not do all together because they're you know, below my pay grade? But, it, you know, is it worth my time to, you know, hit the transmit button on a tax return when it's done? Uh, probably not. I'm going to have my administrative assistant do it because she knows how to. I'm like, here's how you do it. You go here, 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 hit send. Like, done. <laughs> you know, so things like that. And if you batch them, you know, he talks about batching with the, the email, talk about it, or um, re respond, whatever, a couple of times a day, same with voicemail. And you could do it with other things. You know, why not? All right, I have to transmit a whole bunch of stuff. I'll only do it once a day. You know, yeah. If your clients are not signing their tax return until April 15th at 10 p.m., well, that might be their problem. Well, then you have to send it to because... <laughs> or you, your last batch is at 11.45 or whatever time it is. There's actually... It doesn't, like... You, there is no reason if they send it after hours, even if you're going to handle it, yeah. there's still no reason you're checking your email every half an hour. Right. Either they're going to sign it or they're not. Right. That's you're not true. taking questions at this point. Either they're authorized or not. So it's your choice to check email because it right. feels productive. Right. And it's, it's not. not. It's, and he talks about that. You know, are you doing work for work's sake? Just to keep yourself busy. No, you're just busy. wasting time right. to pretend you're working and well, you're not. I'm just being, our board now is, I'm going to sit and scroll on my phone. So the email is the same thing. Email is just as much as Facebook and Instagram are just sitting there and wasting your time. Because yeah, you're doing something, but you're not really doing anything. And I think the other thing is what you said earlier, because it's rattling your head and you're thinking about it. It's like, you know what? I can only stop thinking about this when I get it done. When I just handle it yeah. and get it off my plate. So it's figuring out how to not let that well, rattle around. To not yeah. check the, the email when you're not yeah. sitting down at the computer to respond. That's why your you work email doesn't need to be on your phone. <gasps> <laughs>
I don't know that I could do that. <laughs> let's also remove Facebook and Instagram. Too. Hold on, I mean, but no, but, but, stuff, if, but why is okay? Let's rephrase. It doesn't have to be in your mail application on your phone. You shouldn't be looking at it. it you can have. You're sitting at the computer. Right. You should, you but, know, at those designated times, sit there and do it. But even if you want it on your phone, ha, why is your personal email where you might actually get something you care about, it, like if you want to check email? Your work email can sit in a Gmail app or an Outlook app, depending on whether you use Exchange or Gmail, and then it's not getting the same notifications as everything else. That's true. That's a good mm. point. I mean, I have everything mm. separate. So I have a business email, and then I have a personal and a couple other emails. And I can open up the business one, or I can open up the others. And so it's all separate. So like your list, like I sign up for things, yeah. they're not getting my business email. That's a good idea. They get, my, <laughs> they get my personal one. Now, if it's a business connection, Leslie, you you know, you guys have my business email. If you put me on your list, I'm going to get it on my business one, but that's okay. But for, like, random crap, it goes to the other. So, yeah. But yeah. I also don't, like you said earlier, I don't check emails at all in the morning now. Um, I have set I times. Like, 11 a.m. is the first time. I do like his... Um, the times to, to look and respond, he says, at 12 and 4, which the whole point is that's when people are actually going to see them and respond back to you quickly. And I was like, yes, yes, that's when every normal workday people, they are looking at their email and responding right before 5 o'clock. So that's, that's true. So I was like, oh, that's good. But yeah, I, like I, it. I don't want to check my it. email at noon, so I do at 11 a.m. Yeah, if you don't have anything that's a timely pressing issue that you're dealing with. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm in it a little more because I am responding to other things that I'm working on at that time, but I'm not, and like you said, if you see it, then you're thinking about it, and you're like, oh, I gotta get back, but if you didn't look, notice that at all, you'd be fine. You can't use the same platform for communicating with your clients as communicating with your team. Mm. Because the one that communicates with your clients is a spammed out mess. Yeah. Uh, so whether it's email for clients and Slack in-house. I was going to say, do you, have, do you have a recommendation for I mean, in-house? Because that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at Slack and we're looking at Skype. I One. hate Skype. Skype's uh, kind of annoying. So I use Salesforce I Chatter. Slack a little bit. Because that ties in with the CRM. Right. But the, the Salesforce shop. But if you're not, you know. Slack, you're use Slack. Slack yeah. is fine. It's all right. Yeah, and Slack will tie in with your CRM and you can... You know, it has oh. it is hooked in for HubSpot and Salesforce and Insightly and everyone so you just do a code to attach it to a client. But that way your email becomes in and out. Like one of the things we started to do for a graphic design department, like everything was getting cluttered. It's like what's on Dropbox, what's on this? We're like really simple. The file storage on Salesforce is where the final document goes. We have network attached storage. So you're working on a new 30 second and 15 second cuts of your video spot and you have three hours of footage you're going through. That's fine. That lives locally on our storage. When you are done and you have your two spots, you make the 15, the 30, you put it in the, in the official archive. And from there, that's what everyone goes to. But your internal workspace is your workspace. But it's the same yeah. thing with your work in progress, your communications with your team. Yes, if something comes in for an email that needs to go to a client, you have to forward it over. But then your internal, you know, forward it to them and say, hey, check email from so-and-so in your internal communication. Right, and you can right. get it. Email's great for getting files around. It's terrible for actually communicating. It is. <laughs> it is. The world has changed since Unix timeshares and email was really high tech in like 91. Like it's, it's just it's antiquated technology and it doesn't work the way we work now. And for a lot of, I mean, I know my personal email is just like a freaking dumpster fire. This one, I have like I, I five thousand every day. If there's something I, I want to know if some, if I got something from somebody, I search for that. Right, and even and, even when I think somebody sent me something, half the time I can't find it anywhere. I'm like, can you just resend it? <laughs> it's terrible. All right, it is one thirty-five. So I don't know if anyone has anything else from this this fun book you want to talk about or closing thoughts, comments, etc. I overall, I think it's I think it's a good book to read. I, I can't imagine actually implementing everything, but I think he makes you think about things in a different way than you're just you know get through the day grind. Mm -hmm. um, and some of his like dream planning, you know, I think that's interesting. You know, what if you had the time and and the money, what would you want to go do? So a little creative, different. Which side of your brain is this? The creative side? That one? Yeah. I don't know. I was forget. It's it's the one that I don't use. <laughs> I, I disagree. I've seen you use it. <laughs> I really like the emphasis on 
what is the least amount of effort to get the, mo the most result for what you're trying to accomplish. Right, and that's where he's like a hacker. It's like, And your life should not revolve around, you know, even if you're working odd hours but do it, the, the ability to run an errand midday is dramatically easier than trying to run out at 10 o'clock at night. Like controlling your time is the most important thing. Totally true. And on that note, I think January, we got through one book. One Yay. out of 12. Yay. All right. I'm going to announce our next book because I need to finish reading it. I've only gotten like a chapter in. I'm going to read it. It might be backwards, so I'll... <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys received it backwards. A Clockwork by Mike McCallowitz. Um, I think you're going to find there's probably some similarities between this and Forever Work Week because we're going to talk about how to design your business to run itself. And then once it's running yourself, you only need to spend four hours a week. <laughs> and um, this, this is, I'm in desperate need of this right now because I'm bringing in people and trying to figure out like, well, how do I get myself out of a lot of these busy um, work for work sake and just hand it off to my capable team instead of me doing it. Um, so, and Mike McCallowitz, if you've heard me mention him before, it's because he's also the author of Profit First. That's why I know That's that. why you know the name, because okay. you hear me talk about Profit First all the time. Um, and this is his latest book. And um, the goal here is to also is to take uh, a, mini, um, a mini retirement. They want you to go away for four weeks, have your business still run without you there. So you get, you get more time, and it's a slightly smaller <laughs> book. So if you didn't quite make it through a four-hour work bigger. week. There's big font. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, it's actually, you know, it's a little bit bigger, but... I think, I think we'll be okay. Look, there's big margins. There's a lot of white space. <laughs> uh, the concepts are very similar. I've read both of the Clockwork is much more, speaks like a normal business person and not... <laughs> not a hacker. Not a hacker, bro. Uh, <laughs> bro democrat. business. Well, this is also written in 2007, right? right? It's a little old yeah. at this point. And um, he is an internet marketer, so it's probably a lot is. of that... But, but now that technology has advanced so much, everybody can yeah. incorporate a lot of that in their yeah. you know, regular I mean, businesses. I think one of the funny things was he talks about using the virtual assistant to schedule meetings. I'm like, but now there's so many programs out there that do it for you. You don't even need to pay the virtual assistant. You can just be like, I want to know why my scheduler can't talk to someone else's scheduler at this point. You know, I'm assuming we'll get there. It's like my people talk to your people, my bot talks to your bot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our bots should be able to like... Merge calendars out. and figure it out. So, okay, so everyone get to reading or listening or whatever, clockwork, backwards, a hold upside down, does that help? No, it doesn't help. <laughs> hold your phone up to you. To you. <laughs> hold uh, the phone to mirror, the mirror. So you can read it. All right, guys, so we will see you next month. Hopefully, we'll, maybe we'll do a different, different way to get more people. <laughs> Not just two heads, we'll get all four heads in there. Um, and if anybody else would like to co-host, share out the event to their, um, to their lists or their business or their Facebook or whatever, let me know. Um, I don't know if I mean Tiffany, if you run all of them or just this one, because I don't really know don't how know. the Facebook thing works. I have to look at it. I know I'm a co-host. Like you said, you're going to all of them. If you, if you want to be a co-host or whatever, let me know. If anyone out there wants to be, let me know. <laughs> I don't think anyone's even watching right now. <laughs> okay. They will. <laughs> they will. They will come. No, we had people on. Yeah, I hope everyone's reading. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Coming in for the finish. Try.